Hello everyone. Welcome to session 2 of module 2, Test Levels in Software Development Lifecycle. In this session, we will cover different test levels present in any development life cycles. So let's get started. So different test levels. So there are four test levels present in any development life cycle. Uh, so the first test level can be classified as component testing or unit testing. The second one is integration testing. Third test level is system testing. And the fourth one is acceptance testing. So we will cover, we will understand all these test levels in much more detail in this session. So let's get started with the component testing, which is also known as unit testing. Unit is the smallest testable part of a software system. So unit is can be a method, a class. So the smallest testable part of a software system is known as unit anything any smallest unit in a software that you can test is known as unit so unit testing is testing those smaller chunks of your code be it you know like a class or collection of methods uh, or so any any smaller smallest entity in your software is known as known as unit and unit testing or component testing is testing that smallest entity of the software. So unit testing is done to verify that the lowest independent entities in any software are working fine. So suppose you have written a class, a developer has written a class to perform some operation uh, which takes certain inputs and gives some output. So that is a smallest testable unit of a software so to in order to unit test that class developer writes the unit tests which accept certain inputs and provide the appropriate output so new unit testing is done to verify that that smallest testable class is working fine whatever code has been written in that class is working fine the smallest testable part is isolated from the remainder code and tested to determine whether it works correctly. So in component testing or unit testing, these smaller chunks or smaller testable items are isolated. They are not tested as an integrated system. So they are just isolated and then they are tested in isolation. So that suppose there are hundreds of classes in, in uh, any software being developed so these classes will be separated and will be tested individually and not as an integrated code then stubs and drivers are used to replace the missing components in unit testing so there are situations wherein um, when you start when the developers start coding not all part of the software, not all part of the code is ready um, in the first go. Uh, so there is some module which is being developed and there, there, is, there may be, you know, like call functions or calling functions which are missing. So those, those classes um, or those functionality is replaced by stubs and drivers uh, to replace those component in order to test the component or the test test the unit which has already been developed so let's let's understand the difference between stubs and drivers and how they are used in component testing or unit testing so stubs and drivers so a stub is called from the software component so usually so suppose you have you have a, a module a module B and module C. So module A calls functions from module B and C which are not ready. So suppose a developer wants to do a unit testing for module A but module A uses the functions 
uses the uh, functions which are uh, from B and C which are not ready so what developer will do developer will write a dummy module which simulates B and C so he'll just quickly write a dummy module without uh, worrying about much detail about the functionality of uh, B and C model he'll just quickly write code to to just just simulate what B and C what module B and C do and return values to A so that he can test whether module A or the the, uh, the functionality that is being implemented in module A is fine or not so these dummy modules B and C are known as stub so stub is called from the software component so if you if you see the figure um, A is calling uh, uh, the functionality A is calling uh, some you know methods from B and C so B and C are known as stubs now let's see what what the driver is so driver calls a component to be tested okay so in the same scenario the, the in the same example that we took before suppose you have modules B and C ready but module A which calls methods which calls uh, functionality from module B and C is not ready so in in this case what developer will do is developer will write a dummy piece of code for module A which takes care of the call for module A all right so this this dummy piece of code um, for module A is known as driver so driver calls a component to be tested so in order to uh, replicate the call functionality uh, to test module B and C drivers are required so the module A will be just implemented quickly by the developer to simulate that functionality the the, the calling um, uh, functionality uh, in order to test BNC and that um, module is known as driver that dummy piece of code is known as driver now let's go ahead with component testing so component testing may include testing of functional and non-functional characteristics so it's not necessary that component testing will only test functional um, will only do functional testing and not take into account the non-functional characteristics of the software so component testing tests functionality as well as the non-functional attributes like resource behavior if there are memory leaks or, or something then it also takes care of the robustness testing yeah, that is invalid inputs or stressful environment conditions and then it also tests about you know the it also takes into care of um, the structural testing or the branch coverage or statement coverage uh, so it, it takes into account the functional and non-functional characteristics um, uh, for uh, in, in the unit testing And component testing is typically done by developers so mostly unit testing or component testing is responsibility of developers it it is very rare that you will find that unit testing is is being done by uh, the testers reason being uh, the person who is um, developing the software knows his code better and he can um, write those unit test scenarios quickly rather than somebody else writing uh, those unit test cases testers always provide input um, for uh, for for to the developers in unit testing or component testing but the main piece of unit test code or uh, the the unit test cases are being developed by um, developers so it's mostly done by developers because it needs access to the code that has been written by developer and it needs development environment support so if a software is being developed using Eclipse ID so you need access to all that development environment and all the 
code to write the unit test cases for the code that is being developed so mostly it is done by developers because um, you need access to code and support to development environment it's very rare that you will find unit testing being done by developers and defects are typically fixed as soon as they are found so in component testing as soon as developers find any defect in the component or module in or a unit they they just fix it then and there there is no formal um, defect logging process in component or unit testing so they write your, their unit test cases execute those test cases and if they if they find any defect around unit testing they fix it then and there and no defect logging process followed in component testing or unit testing